on the cat toy lady. So today is not really a toy for your cat, but it is something that's needed for many people, probably more than we realize. What I'm going to be showing you today is a litter box for handicapped cats. I'm sure at this point everyone knows that you can use a Rubbermaid for a regular litter box where you just cut down the side so your cat can step in. But what about those babies that can't step over anything? Whether they're little wheelchair kitties or they're missing a limb and therefore it becomes a little bit more difficult to step over something. Now that people are trying more to be able to help the special needs kitties and not just euthanizing, I think this litter box is really needed for more than just a couple people. And it's actually pretty inexpensive to make. If you're going for kitten size, these are $5 for two of them at my local Target. And the large one itself is $5. The tools I'm going to be using today are nice and easy. I have my glue gun. You can do hot or low temp. And this is a wood burner, or what they call a hobby tool. Basically, it just gets really freaking hot, kind of like a soldering iron. But the tip of it is an X-Acto blade, so it can do a fine line of cutting while it melts. And of course, I have my usual odds and ends. I am going to be using some sanding paper and a sanding block permanent marker for marking, and my ruler. And for those of you that want to know the exact dimensions and the brand, here you go. We are going to be using the lid and the base. So when you're in the store, don't forget to grab that lid. Just put your lid to the side. So to start with, I'm going to mark a line going all the way across one inch from the bottom. So you can kind of see my starting points. I measured where one inch was. And I'm going to go all the way across the bottom on one side just like that. Then if you can see, there's two different little tabs that stick out underneath. We are going to make a line from the inside of the tab that's farthest out. So we're going to go just on the inside of it. We are going to do a line straight down on both ends. Just like that. Now we're going to take our melting tool. We're going to go straight down till we hit that one inch edge, go across and then back up and we are going to completely remove this panel. Just a little tip, go slow. If you push too hard, it will crack. And any little blobs that come off on the sides, we can peel off and sand off once it's done. So don't worry about those. Just like that. Okay, see how it's a little uneven and there's pieces sticking up? What you do is you just take a pair of pliers and pull off those extra little melty pieces. You want to peel all these off that you can on both pieces. That'll just make sanding a whole lot easier. Once you peel those pieces off, go ahead and just take a sanding block to it, kind of smooth out the edges. While sanding, remember your goal is not only to get rid of the sharp pieces, but we are rounding the edge. Everything's sanded, nice and smooth. Now I'm going to be taking what's going to become our ramp and making little notches on each side so it can sit into place right here. So the best way to do this is this lip that runs on the back side. We're going to get it caught right on the edge here, and then we're going to center it and just see how much overhang we have on each side. And I'm just going to mark eyeballing just that much. But I am going to be adjusting my mark just a little bit because when this sits at an angle, I want this lip, if you can see my finger, to bump right up against this corner here at an angle. So I am going to make this mark, let's see, as it's sitting at about a one inch angle, there's my new line. I did that to the other side too. Now I'm going to melt just where that line is, and I'm going to make it just the same thickness as the wall of the container. And as you're doing this, if you get too much plastic built up and you don't want all that smoke, scrape off on wood, that way it doesn't damage your tool, the plastic residue. Let's see if we melted enough to fit it in. Oh look, we did, just right. Now we're gonna start getting everything ready for the insert that's going to go in. So you wanna measure straight across and then from the edge of this lip to the other wall. And we're gonna be measuring from three fourths of an inch up from the base. The walls do taper, so you don't wanna measure the top but closer to the bottom. So right at 20 inches and 13 and a half inches. 
set this to the side for a minute. Now I'm going to measure 20 inches by 13 and a half. And if you look at this indention that goes all the way around, it's just on the outer edge of that is where that falls. So it's best to keep it centered. And then our 13 and a half inches and connect your dots. There's our outline. Now we are going to melt through on these lines all the way around. But remember on the inside are all these little tabs. Easiest thing to do is just melt through evenly and then go back and snip along where the melt lines are to disconnect. So now that I've melted through one side, I'm just going to go through with some wire snips and just clip these plastic pieces to disconnect. That easy. And there we go. Now if you see, there's a whole bunch of little spiky pieces all around. Take your snips and just snip them right off and then sand them down flat. And while you're sanding, go ahead and smooth out the edges too and give them that nice little rounded feel. So because the tray has rounded corners, we need to round the corners of our tray too. Nothing too hard, just give it a little snip, not too big of a piece, and then again, sand and make it smooth. And if it's just a hair too big, just wait. We'll do our final adjustments at the end. Put the top of the tray to the side. We're now going to use the rest of the pieces of the lid to make an insert that sits inside. That way the tray stays elevated and level with the ramp. The elevation is also going to be a bonus because you're going to be able to put a pee pad down in the bottom. And we are also going to be adding holes to the top tray. That way pee can come through, but everything else stays on top. That way it pulls the urine away from the kitty. And crystal and pellet litter is going to be your best friend for this. So let's start trimming this to size. We want this to be able to fit in the groove that goes all the way around the bottom of the tray. So the best way to do that is to just cut a piece and then start fitting the rest like a puzzle. So I'm gonna trim right on the other side of this handle piece and then down to the middle, but I'm going to trim where this bar is. I'm gonna trim just on the outside of it. And then the rest pops off. So it's going to sit about right here. And then I'm going to slide this in here and just kind of eyeball where I need to trim to make everything sit right. And then again, I'm gonna trim right where the handle is. All right, we have two pieces. We are going to fit this in again the same way. And I think just on the other side of the handle will be the perfect cut spot again. And then I'm gonna trim in the middle, just again on the other side of that support. On my last piece, I'm going to be trimming that handle off again. And then seeing where I need to trim, to get everything to line up correctly. So basically we're making four pieces that will make a rectangle that'll sit in between the grooves. If you can see, just like that. And now for the fun part, gluing. So take your pieces out, keeping them lined up, and I'm going to take painter's tape, just the cheap stuff, you don't have to do the fancy green, and I'm going to tape these pieces together so we can flip it over and glue the inside. If things don't line up exactly flush, it's okay. It's not a piece that anyone's really going to be seeing, but you can trim it just a hair to make things sit a little more evenly. When you tape, you wanna tape from one edge to the other. That way on the inside, you can fill this up with glue and it'll fill in any of the cracks. Then flip it over and fill in with glue. We're gonna glue right along that seam and then back and forth, covering a lot of area with it. Then let that cool till it's really hard. While you're waiting for the pieces to cool, you can go ahead and just angle some of these sharp pieces that are in here. I'm just going to snip the pieces off. You do want to leave them all together. You just want to be able to trim the points off. That way they can sit nice and level. Once it's cool, go ahead and pull that tape off. Now it's back to being one solid piece. So the part where you can see the logo is going to be your top and the underneath side that have those little nubs going along the edge is your bottom. And to make this part look a little bit neater, I am using my ruler to make sure everything lines up and I am going to put a dot every inch going all the way down. So it's going to be a one inch grid, down an inch, over an inch, that tight. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark out my one inch on my side. And then I'm gonna drop down 11 inches and do dots going along every inch for 16 inches across. 
So there's my initial dot, and I'm just going to fill in the rest of this with a dot every inch. Holy tar. Okay, so I did my dots, and I made a second section of half inch marks for four inches centered. Because this naturally has a curve to it, everything will be drained down, and I'm just giving some extra drainage in the middle. If you can see here, I changed out my tip. It's just a fine little cone, and I am going to just go through each one of those holes and just make a little dot from the bottom. That way any of the glue that blobs up won't be seen and you won't have to worry about sanding it off either. You want the hole to be about two millimeters thick. If you think about an old school number two pencil, the lead that's in the middle, about that thickness. So I'm gonna go through and put holes where all the dots are. Okay, so that's probably the least fun part of the whole thing. But do you see the holes? And if for some reason you don't want the pee to be able to drain through, just don't put the holes. So last little bit, I almost forgot to tell you, see these two little pieces? We're going to trim those off. Voila. So time to assemble. You can go ahead and put a pee pad down if you'd like. Then you're going to set your rectangle insert in. We are taking the ram and setting it into place. And just so you know, the way this is, there's not going to be any resistance coming up. There's even going to be kind of a catch so they can get some grip with this edge. And then we take the top of our tray and set it right in. There's just a little bit of an overhang right here. So I'm just going to sand down my edges on, the, on both long sides just so it can be a smooth transition. And if you're worried about having a heavier kitty and the bottom collapsing some, take some of the pieces that you already clipped off and the piece that's in here, we're going to trim it at an angle going straight across. That way it could sit flat. I'm going to do two of them and you can put them close together towards the middle and then that's going to give you that extra support. All this can be taken out, it can be sterilized, it can be scrubbed. Okay, it's done. I made the final adjustments. It's all done. A kitty cat with a, either a wheelchair or missing limbs can easily be able to come up the ramp without anything to have to step over into their litter. And when they do pee, it's going to immediately be pulled away from them to where it can drip into the tray at the bottom. And of course, to be able to keep the smell down, use a pee pad. And the best part is this can be easy for shelters that are taking care of special needs. It only takes $5 to make the litter box. And this would be good for senior kitties too. Some cats don't like to go in litter boxes that they have to step over once they start getting arthritis. This would be a great addition to a senior household. A little bit of time, a little bit of love and you can help the special needs too. And if you're thinking to yourself, what else could I make that I can donate? Check out these videos. And if you haven't hit that subscribe button, you're going to want to see what's going to happen next. Now go make your cat some toys.